So when, when he gave us the topic of one prayer and he began to say, what is one prayer that you would pray? I began to kind of jog my mind and, and I said, I dare not create my own prayer. There are plenty of prayers in the Bible. And so I, I began thinking through many prayers um, and then I tried to find what prayer that I could relate to. Uh, and, and I ended up in the book of Ephesians because I can relate with the church of Ephesus. So the book of Ephesians was written to the church of Ephesus. Now, I'm going to give you a little background history about this church. The church was a church that Paul visited uh, twice. One time he went there quickly. The second time he went there, he stayed for three years. So he, he was very familiar with this church. He spent time with this church. He intimately knew who they were. And so in him spending time at this church, he knew what was happening. And this book is the only book that the Apostle Paul wrote where there was no word of correction. There was no rebuke. This book was a book of encouragement. And so I chose this passage today because I know that those of us who are in the room, we cover a wide span. There are some of you who may have just given your life to God today. And there are some of you who have been knowing Jesus since you was two. Um, and so I wanted to find a passage that could connect with everyone. And so this church, they were, um, had a reputation of, of being a very uh, prestigious church. They, they uh, experienced the miracles of God. It's been documented that people were healed with miracle signs and wonders. They were a church who had so much influence that they had a book burning ceremony where everyone who was involved in the occult uh, came and brought their books and burned it. And so this was a church who was experiencing God. And in a great way, they had seen the hands of God. And so I'm sure many of you can say that, that I've experienced God. I've, I've seen how he's healed my body. I've seen how he's provided for me financially. I can tell you about times when I prayed and God answered my prayer. This, who, who can relate to that? And so this is the type of church uh, that the Apostle Paul is writing this letter to. And so if we look at verse 17, he says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, this church who had clearly been experiencing God, who had, who had a testimony, his prayer was still that you would know more about him. His prayer was still that you would know him intimately. intimately. So clearly we would say, okay, they already know God. They're seeing miracles. They're seeing uh, wonders. They're seeing great things. But the apostle Paul is saying there is still more that you can experience in God. He talked about that he wanted him to know him. The, the word he used for know is the same word that is used to talk about Adam and Eve, where a husband knows a wife intimately. Pastor Carlos said last week that he'd been married for 38 years, and he still does not know fully his wife. And so the first part of this prayer, the Apostle Paul is encouraging them. I know you're seeing great things. I've heard about your faith. But don't be satisfied with what you know right now. His prayer was that you would continue to grow in the knowledge of God, that you would continue to seek after God. So that wasn't really my, my point, but I just wanted to throw that in there. And so uh, looking at verse 18, there are three parts that we want to talk about in verse 18. The first part is the Apostle Paul prayed that they would know what is the hope of his calling. He then also said that they would understand the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And then what is the exceeding great power towards us who believe? So we're going to first start off with the hope of his calling. You as a believer, God intends for you to live a life that is full of hope. To live a life that is full of hope. So to make sure we're on the same page, we're going to define what hope is. Now, by today's standards, the word hope is like wishful. You know, it's, it's, hey, you know, I, I see that pretty girl. I hope I get her number. I'm wishing it's a 50-50 chance. It may or may not happen. I hope that happens. Past like, yeah, I'm going to get it. And so, um, just kidding. And so it says that we hope in that. Or it's like a child who hopes for a bicycle. I hope for Christmas I get this bicycle. I don't know if I'm going to get it, but I'm hoping. I wish that it may happen. But the biblical definition of hope is a happy anticipation of good that typically ends in pleasure. So when the Apostle Paul is talking about hope, he's talking about a happy anticipation of good. It's likened unto, like myself, I am um, engaged to be married April 26, 258 days. 
because I'm expecting to get married. I know the date. I got to count it down. I know, you know, I'm ready for it to happen. I'm, I'm expecting it. I'm happy. Or it's like that child who, who the, the father says, I'm going to give you a bike on Christmas. How many of you have children? Have you ever encountered to where you tell your child they're going to have something at a certain time and they bug you every day? Is the time yet? Is the time yet? Are we there yet? That's that hope. Because my mommy told me I'm getting a bike on Christmas, I'm asking her every day, is it Christmas yet? Is it Christmas yet? Christmas Eve, strike midnight, they're knocking on the door. Can I open gifts? Can I open gifts? It's, it's, it's that anticipation of that I know I'm going to get that which I'm believing for. And God says as a disciple, as a believer, that you ought to have hope, that you ought to have confidence in that which you go to God in prayer, in, in that which you are believing God for, you ought to have confidence that I'm going to get that. Amen? So he said for us to have a hope of his calling. So what is the calling of God? Within that, there is so much wrapped up, and we're going to uh, go through a couple parts of that. Within uh, his calling, there is salvation. Because you answered the call of God, you are saved. You don't have to worry about going to hell. I'm going to spend eternity with God. And the apostle Paul was praying that you will have hope in that calling, that you will have hope to know that I don't have to worry about what's going to happen in death. I know the fact that I am saved. I am seated on the right hand of God. I'm not concerned about the cares of this world. He said for you to have hope in that. So part of the prayer is for me to have hope in the fact that I'm saved. I can also have hope in the fact that I'm a child of God. God said that you are a child of God. John 1 and 12 and 13 talks about those that believe he gave them the power or he gave them the right to become a son or a daughter of God. So Paul is saying for you to have hope in the fact that you are a son of God and the fact that you are a daughter of God, the fact that God is your father. And as your father, he promises to give you provision. He promises to give you hope. He promises to take care of you. You don't have to worry about the cares of this world because the God who owns the universe is your father. And he promised that he would take care of you. Let me give you a contrast. If Oprah Winfrey was your mother, would you worry about what you're going to eat for dinner? <laughs> would you worry about where you're going to stay? If Bill Gates was your father, would you be concerned about where I'm going to be 20 years from now? So how much more God, who has more money than them, who has more power than why should you fret about that? Understand that you are a child of God and that he called you to be a child of God. And as a child of God, he says that you have the right and the ability to imitate God. You have the right and the ability to be like your father. God has given you that hope that you can be like your father, like the little boy who wants to wear his father's suit jacket, or like the little girl who wants to wear high heels. He says that as a child of God, you can be like him. Now, also in that hope is he has given you a destiny. He's given you a purpose. I know one of, uh, of the popular scriptures here is Jeremiah 29 and 11, where God talks to him about that before he was in his mother's womb, that God had a purpose, that God had a dream, that he God had a destiny. And the apostle Paul is telling them, have hope in the dream of God. Have hope in the destiny of God. I understand situations did not turn out the way you wanted them to, or stuff may happen that may want you to feel discouraged. But he is saying, have hope in that, a happy anticipation of good. If God shows you that you're going to accomplish that, you can take hope that the God of the universe is going to bring that to pass. Don't allow the situations around you. Don't allow the circumstances around you. I, the, God is my father. Oprah Winfrey is my mother. So if I'm, I don't care if we're in re re recession or any other kind of stuff. If there's a depression, she got millions of billions. I'm not concerned what's happening, right? How much more God? The God of the, of the world, the God of the universe. He, the Apostle Paul is praying that you will take hope in the fact that that he has given you a destiny, he has given you a purpose, and you can expect that that will come to pass. Amen? Amen? Also within that calling is that you have the opportunity to experience the supernatural. You have the opportunity to experience it in your own life. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call upon me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. 
We see throughout the Bible where people called upon God and God showed up and showed them great and mighty things. You see the prophet Elijah where he was being ridiculed and it was a standing between God and the gods of Baal and he prayed down fire and fire came down. There was Joshua who was in a battle and he wanted to win the battle but the sun was coming down so he began to pray and the sun stayed still so he was able to finish that battle. You see Hezekiah who was getting ready to die and he began to pray and said God I want more time and God gave him more time. You see Jesus who walked in and said Lazarus come forth and Lazarus came forth. You have access to that same God. He said if you call upon me I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. God is not a, a respect of person. Moses was no greater than you. Elijah was no greater than you. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so he says, if you call upon me, if you invite me into a situation, if you don't, as Daniel said earlier, if you don't try to do it in your own strength, but if you invite me, that I will come there and I will show you great and mighty things. It doesn't matter what the situation or the task is. God, uh, the Apostle Paul is saying, have hope in the fact that you can call upon God and he will show up on the scene. Have faith in the fact that the God of the universe will show up. I don't care what you're going through or what situation you're faced with, God is greater. And he's saying, have hope in that. Have hope in the fact that God is greater than, than what you're being faced with. Have hope. You know, don't, don't act like those who don't know God and have no hope. If you don't know God, then you have a reason to not have hope. But those who know God, I have hope because I've read the end of the book. We win. Amen. We win. So I, I don't have to get discouraged or dismayed because I know that. Also, the supernatural can flow through us uh, because we are told in Mark uh, that these signs shall follow them that believe, that we shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. We shall raise the dead. We shall heal, you know, speak in new tongues. All of that is available to us. God says that I've equipped you to not just affect you, but to go out and change the world. You can go out and pray for someone. Your coworker can have a headache, and you can pray for them with confidence and know that God is going to heal them. You can go and pray for someone who's feeling depressed or who wants to commit suicide and know that God is going to pull that spirit off of them and that the power of God is going to touch them, touch them in a supernatural way. You can take hope in that. Happy anticipation of good. Take hope in the fact that God wants to use you to change the world around you. I understand that the dream may seem impossible or it may seem like it's too much to do, but the Apostle Paul is saying have hope in the fact that you're not doing it alone, that God, your Father, the one who called you to do it, he will be there to help you bring it to pass. Amen? Amen. So in this calling, uh, we also have the ability to experience uh, the blessings of God. We get to experience his favor. I know Pastor Steve preached a great message about the favor of God and, and, and to where, you know, I, I, I get to experience God's unmerited love for me to where stuff just happens ridiculously to where, you know, people just bless me with money. I get promotions. I'm able to change my family. All of this stuff happens to me. It is the hope of my calling, knowing that although I may have messed up yesterday, but when I wake up this morning, goodness and mercy are waiting for me. When I wake up this morning, forgiveness is there for me. And that he, he, he casts my, my sins into the sea of forgetfulness. That I, that I don't have to worry about guilt and shame and condemnation. It doesn't matter what you did last night. If you will repent to God today, your life starts over again. Amen. And so he's saying that in that, you have hope. But understand that with this, there comes persecution. There comes pressure. Jesus said, as you will rejoice in me or, or as you will encounter the benefits of being with me, there's also a cross that I have to carry that you have to carry as well. I want to give you some scripture references and I want to make sure that I read them exactly. John 15 and 20, you don't have to turn it, I'll read it to you. Jesus said, remember what I told you. As a servant is not greater than his master, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If you obey my teaching, 2 Timothy 3 and 12 said, those who live godly will be persecuted. 